make it impossible for workers to bargain for decent wages in this country. Wages are going down. The president is holding up General Motors as you know as the example of a recovery. You know these are it's a recovery if you're the CEO, but if you're the worker, your wages have been basically cut in half with these new tier wage systems. 50 million people who don't have health insurance. You know it's not working, and the both political parties and both Obama and Romney are not really offering anything different. They're pretending to get us back to where we were before, which was a system that was in a meltdown, you know, in slow motion over a period of decades when money has been concentrating at the top and ordinary people have been really struggling to keep their heads above water, uh, to keep jobs and you know, wages that'll support a family and will afford health care, you name it. There's really not a thing out there that isn't um, becoming an incredible hardship. While the wealthy few who got us into this fix to start with continue to flourish, their income has basically tripled over the past couple of decades. And the political establishment now makes things worse by imposing austerity on everyday people while squandering trillions on wars that don't make us more secure, a military budget that's basically doubled in the last 10 years, and we are certainly not you know, more secure. We don't have more friends. Uh, Al-Qaeda and whoever else, Taliban, they're not weaker. You know, some of their notable uh, leadership has been eliminated, but every time you, you know, every time you eliminate one leader, another one arises up immediately to fill their place. You know, it's been well documented. A recent uh, uh, investigative article by the Washington Post made clear how this drone bombing, for example, in Yemen was not making us safe. In fact, it was just proliferating the the opposition, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in Yemen. So. We've been squandering trillions on these wars for oil, on Wall Street bailouts, and on tax breaks for the wealthy, mm -hmm. and on a massive, wasteful health insurance bureaucracy mm -hmm. that provides us less and less health care all the time as we get sicker and sicker. Look at the, uh, you know, the statistics for diabetes in, in teenagers, which doubled over the course of the last 10 years. Twice as many teens now are either diabetic or pre-diabetic. So mm -hmm. we're spending more money going more bankrupt while we get more sick. What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture is that, you know, American institutions, including our political institutions, have been completely hijacked. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back to your original question about why, you know, why this is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, you know, it's not a well-guarded secret that the system has been bought out. You know, it's uh, billions that the campaigns of the establishment campaigns will be spending this year on the presidential race, coming from you know ever deeper pockets with rules that permit more flagrant uh, buyout of our democracy than ever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's gotten to the point where it's really not a democracy anymore. It's not serving the 99 percent by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. But why? Why is the Democratic Party? You know, I think because I think that's probably where most of the focus will be when you look at picking up support from, mm -hmm. from progressives and from from people in the anti-war wing, from peace activists, mm -hmm. from... Uh, so why is that no longer the vehicle for those particular causes? Yeah, you know, I think the record speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. And we've heard, uh, you know, uh, we've heard President Obama talk the talk, but we've seen him walk the walk, mm -hmm. or rather run the run, you know, really in the opposite direction mm -hmm. from what he's been talking about. And, and issue after issue, he's basically embraced the policies of George Bush and then even gone beyond them. So on the, well, on Wall Street bailouts, for example, you know, it was 700 billion under George Bush, but it was more like 16 trillion uh, under Barack Obama. Uh, on the uh, free trade agreements, which offshore our jobs and undermine wages in this country, we've seen those only expand under Barack Obama. The attacks on Medicare and Social Security as part of this debt ceiling negotiation, that was actually launched by the White House and by Barack Obama. He introduced uh, cuts to Medicare and Social Security. It wasn't John Boehner, it was coming from the White House. The White House was saying, no, we don't need to 
pulled the line at two trillion dollars worth of austerity. Let's go for four trillion dollars worth of austerity. You know, just you know, name your issue. It's really been uh, accelerated in the wrong direction by the president. And, and let me address peace specifically. On day three of President Obama's administration, he intensified the bombing over Pakistan. Then he extended it into Yemen and Somalia, where it had never the drone wars were not taking place before. He tripled the troops into Afghanistan with this Afghanistan surge. And the only reason that he withdrew from Iraq was because he was forced to comply with the prearranged date of withdrawal uh, arranged for, for George Bush. So George Bush beat Barack Obama to the punch, you know, on bringing the troops home from Iraq. And a couple other things have to be named. The incredible crisis in foreclosures, which has displaced about 6 million families with another 12 million at risk. This has been allowed to just, um, you know, explode without mitigation of any sort, and the same for the student debt crisis, where you have virtually an entire generation of students now who are indentured servants without a future because they cannot repay these loans with the kinds of jobs that are available if they're lucky enough to find a job at all. And finally, the attack on our civil liberties and on immigrant rights, which are essentially human rights. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama's policies have basically conducted racial profiling and deportation uh, the policies of the DHS nice. Uh, yes, that's program. right. The Secure Communities Program, which, by the way, is being made mandatory. Uh, I don't know and if you're aware of that. Program. This is a kind of, a, um, you know, it's one of those well-guarded realities of the uh, president's policies. But he's actually declared mm -hmm. that secure communities will no longer be optional, so-called commu right. secure communities. They will be mandatory. It is his hallmark, exactly. And so he's deported more people in four years than President Bush did in eight years. And even with the recent claims a couple months ago that he was going to pull back, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, straighten up immigration so that upstanding immigrants who've been a clear part of our communities and our economies would not be subject to this very hostile attack of his anti-immigrant policies. Mm -hmm. He didn't follow through on that either. That hasn't really changed at all. Mm -hmm. And on civil liberties, uh, you know, he's basically codified the violations of George Bush mm -hmm. and then even gone beyond them with H.R. 347, which has criminalized our right to protest, mm -hmm. essentially, you know, creating a felony violation for anybody who happens to be at a protest when a, um, you know, when a Secret Service uh, agent shows up, by default it becomes a site of special national security. So anyone is at risk, even obeying the law. You know, not you don't even have to be conducting civil disobedience or part of a picket line. You can be perfectly compliant with all rules and regulations and laws, but still you're a felon mm -hmm. if, unbeknownst to you, a, um, a a Secret Service agent has shown up and and the ground on which you stand has suddenly been declared of special national significance. That plus the targeting now of U.S. citizens for assassination. Mm -hmm. The president has actually codified his right to put you on a list for assassination without having to justify it to anyone. And again, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the, his right to indefinitely detain you and declare you a, a criminal without your ever having been accused of a crime or found guilty of anything before a jury. So the Democratic Party is no longer a party for, for, for progressive, for, for the peace for... Exactly. For